Of all the fish found in British waters, brown trout have by far the widest ranging appearance. The Victorians listed many of them as different species, but they were wrong. And it was only as recently as the 1970s that we realized they are all the same fish, a fish that was demonstrating a remarkable adaptability. And there's no better place than the famous trout rivers of mid Wales to see these differences close up. Today, I'm not so lucky, but at least my fishing partner has got one in the net. So this is, this is, this is normal for the river, this, this normal fish? Normal sort of size. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be, if you catch ten, there'll be seven that size. And in terms of markings and appearance? Very typical. Yeah. And that little white line along the anal fin, very much typical for this river. This may be a common specimen here, but on other waters only a few miles away, they can look completely different. Like this fish, which has almost leopard-like spots. It's easy to see how the Victorians, without today's DNA technology, thought these were all different species. Their markings offer a tailor-made camouflage to the particular environment in which they live. They even manage to survive where you least expect it. At the top of this river, you've got pHs down to four. That's like lemon juice. Trout are everywhere, though, and they tend to look shorter, great big heads on them, lots of teeth, black, and very slow growing. In fact, it's not just acidic water they can deal with, but a wide range of temperatures, flow rates, and even saltiness. And the brown trout's ability to survive where other fish perish is not limited to British waters. And this inspired their introduction far beyond our borders. When the British Empire began expanding, the pioneers took with them their beloved fish. North America, South America, India, Bhutan, Australia, New Zealand, all have populations brought by the settlers. You can almost imagine a group of English gentlemen wandering the plains of Africa, proclaiming that the only thing missing was a trout stream. So how can they survive from continent to continent, or indeed from river to river? It all goes back to the last ice age. As ice and snow covered most of the United Kingdom, many fish species either perished or, if they were able, made their way out to sea. But some brown trout managed to hang on in isolated pockets all over the country. When the big thaw came, these populations of super survivors interbred, and modern trout have inherited their genetic disposition to adapt to whichever environment they find themselves in. And every one of them is concealing in its genes another, even more miraculous, ability to adapt. During the early stages of development, they either remain as brown trout in the river, or if the food and survival prospects are limited there, they start to undergo a dramatic physical transformation and migrate down to the sea, where they become this, a sea trout. The fish not only get bigger and alter their color, they develop new internal organs that will allow them to make the change from living in fresh water to salt water. They spend their lives roaming the British coastline, but return to fresh water to spawn. And their offspring then have the option to become either sea trout or brown trout. With these fish showing such dramatic differences in appearance and behavior, it's no wonder Victorians mistook each for completely different species. This extreme adaptability has now been recognized. The trout outperforms all other river fish and is the ultimate survivor.